nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition and lift off. Godspeed, Apollo 11, Michael Connell, Collins. May the pursuit of exploration live on. Vehicles pitching downrange. Stage one propulsion is nominal. Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station right. carrying our carrying our stack of Starlink satellites to orbit. The next event coming up here shortly is Max-Q. Max-Q is the maximum aerodynamic pressure that the vehicle sees on ascent. So throttling down, supersonic. throttling down those engines helps us pass through that large structural load. Vehicle has reached maximum aerodynamic pressure. And there's that call out that we've passed through Max Q. In about a minute, we'll have three events happening within seconds of each other. The first will be MECO or main engine cutoff, followed by stage separation and SES 1 or second engine start 1. Now, MECO is where we shut down all nine of the en engines on the first stage. And back engine chill has started. Just a call out that the MVAC chill has begun on that second stage engine. So for Miko, we shut down all nine of the engines and that slows the vehicle down in preparation for that second event, which is stage separation. Stage separation is where the first stage separates from the second stage and first stage will begin its journey back home, heading towards our drone ship, just read the instructions while stage two continues on its journey with the third event, SES one or second engine start one. And that is where we light up that MVAC engine and it propels the second stage along with the Starlink satellites towards its drop-off orbit. And Miko. Stage separation confirmed. In the ignition. We had Miko and stage separation. On your left hand screen is a view from the first stage. On your right hand screen is a view of that second stage engine. You kind of saw a glow of that T TEB, that green flame, when we ignited that engine. We're coming up on fairing deploy here shortly. Fairing separation confirmed. And there you could see confirmation on your screen that we have successfully deployed those fairing halves. And as a reminder, we will be attempting to recover the fairing halves today with a contracted recovery vessel named Sheila Bordelon. On your left-hand screen, it is a little dark over there on the East Coast because it is nighttime, but we did get some glimpses of the sunlight hitting those grid fins. Let's see if we can get some more views of that in a little bit. As stage two, position of signal, Bermuda. As stage two takes our Starlink satellites to their targeted drop-off orbit, stage one will make its way back to Earth by executing two burns. The first is the entry burn, and that's where we light up three of the nine M1D engines. And this will help to slow the stage down as it re-enters back into the upper parts of the Earth's atmosphere. The second of those two burns for that first stage is called the landing burn. And this is where a single engine, the center engine, uh, will reignite and bring the vehicle speed down rapidly in order to touch down on that drone ship. As a reminder, we are attempting to land on just read the instructions tonight. And those M1D engines do have a thrust of 190,000 pounds. So that lighting up that one single engine slows the entire vehicle down 
just enough to touch down on that drone ship. Stage two is still looking good, and what you're seeing on your screen is a view of that MVAC engine. Vehicles following a nominal trajectory. Now, if you're just catching up with us, we had a successful launch of Falcon 9 from Cape Canaveral Space Launch Complex 40, and you're looking at a live view of the Falcon 9 second stage as it is making its way to deliver our Starlink payload to orbit. Stage one is currently cruising back to Earth towards our drone ship. Just read the instructions out in the Atlantic Ocean. We're just about a minute away from the next event on that first stage. That'll be the entry burn. Again, Starlink satellites are going to a LEO orbit or low Earth orbit about 550 kilometers above the Earth's surface. Now, most satellites are at 36,000 kilometers or in a geo or geostationary orbit. We are just about roughly 30 seconds away from that entry burn beginning. On your left-hand screen, there is the first stage. It is a little dark. You can see some glimpses of the, the nitrogen gas burst that you see there. Stage one, FTS is safe. Stage one, entry burn. And you can see on your left-hand screen, the entry burn has begun as those three engines light up that view for us. This entry burn will last about 20 seconds long. Stage one, entry burn shut down. And that concludes... Stage two continues to follow a nominal trajectory. That concludes the entry burn, and then we also got to call out that stage two is still nominal. The next event coming up will be in about a minute from now. That'll be the landing burn, the start of the landing burn on the first stage. And what you're looking at live on your screen is a view from the second stage looking aft at the MVAC engine. That MVAC engine has a thrust of 220,500 pounds of thrust in a vacuum. It's very, very powerful engine taking our Starlink satellites to their targeted drop-off orbit. Stage one transonic. Still getting good call-outs on that first stage. We're about 15 seconds or so away from that landing burn beginning on the first stage. Stage two still looking good. Stage one landing burn. The landing burn has begun. Let's watch and see if this Falcon 9 can land on our drone ship. Just read the instructions. And a really cool onboard view. Stage one landing leg deploy. And there Stage you can see. Burn. The first stage Falcon 9 has landed for has landed for its seventh time. This marks our 81st successful recovery of an orbital class rocket and again the seventh flight and seventh uh, landing Seco. of this booster. And then we heard a good call out for Seco. That second engine cutoff. Nominal parking orbit insertion. And a good orbital insertion. Loss of signal, Cape.